in civil and structural engineering structural analysis help us to compute the response of a structure some of these responses include bending stresses shear reaction forces and axial forces in this video we are going to be using a python 2d finite element method library called anastruct to compute the bending moment shear force reaction and axial forces of a compound frame with three supports and two internal hinges so let's dive in okay the structure we are going to be modeling is a frame structure and got it from this website structville.com so this is a frame structure and it has three members with three support conditions we have one is fixed and the other at C we have which is roller and also the other one is roller we have one load that is horizontal is coming is reacting at this point and we have the uniformly distributed load at this member here and we have one point load so we are going to model the structure exactly as it is in Anastruct's Python library so the first thing we need to do is for us to install the library and the normal command you know is pip install anastruct but since i have it i don't need to install it now then what we need to do next is for us to import the system element class so this class is what hold the the, the state of of the structure that we want to build that is it can hold the material type the material properties and a lot of things with it you can do both linear and non-linear analysis you can define it in in the argument that you pass to it you can look at the documentation for more on this class so we are creating an object from this class which we are calling it ss then the next thing for us to do is to define members that make up the frame so we are using the add element method from the system element class and we are passing an argument location which define the coordinate this coordinate is what is going to define our various span or length of the members so as you can see here from point a to where this five kilo newton is acting is two meters so when we go back to our code you can see that at this point which is zero x is zero y is zero which shows you that okay at this point everything here is zero then going up to two meters so from zero zero to zero x2 is zero that is still acting at zero then y is two meters is going up by two as you can see that is by two is going up by two then from here to here is another two meter so we are also defining it so which if you can see is two plus two is four so from that position now is four so that is how we define the whole uh, length of our various members on this structure. You can look at the documentation for more explanation on how these uh, coordinates work in Anastruct. So the next thing for us to do here is to add our internal hinges. When you look at the structure, you can see that at this point we have internal hinge and at also at this point we have internal hinge so what we are defining it is using this this at internal hinge method from the system element class so we are defining the the point at which that is the node id that is the point at which those internal hinges are going to be put 
so we are defining it at this point and then at this we have two of them so we are defining it at three and five then the next thing for us to do is to add our support conditions so as we have said before we have three support conditions which one is fixed to our roller support so the way we can define it in anastruct is by is by calling this add support fixed what this add support fixed method does is to call so that we can be able to create the the fixed support condition here and we are giving it we are passing the argument at which we where we want the the the, the, the support condition to be located so at node id 1 which shows that this place here is 1 then the next thing also we have the add support rule which we are passing node id 4 so that is here we want it to be here and then because you can count this is not id this is not id 1 this is 2 this is 3 and then this is 4 so then the next one is the two ruler support that we want which is at 4 and then at 6 then the next thing for us to do is to define our loadings for the member for the various members that make up the the frame structure so we have five kilo newton acting positively on this point here one so this is how we define it we say we call this point load method and then we give the node id where we want which indicates that from this is one this is two so we are defining it to be at two this is two then fx is where this is a keyword argument so we are doing plus five which shows you that the load is going to this fx is showing us that the load is horizontal if it is q or f y mostly we use q so q q will will show us that it is a uniformly distributed load but if it is f y that is for point load so but if it is fx it shows us that it is a horizontal load and we are using plus five which shows us that the load in here is positive five then this q as we've said is the uniformly distributed load acting downward which is going to be negative negative two so this is what we did at this the second point which is two and then we define the element id because this this uniformly distributed load is not acting at a point but is acting at an element so this is what we did and then for the other one also so and then the others so this solve method is going to compute or is going to calculate all the reaction the response that this structure is going to be so all the response of this structure is going to be calculated that is from the bending moment the shear force the axial force the reaction forces at the support conditions so it's going to make the computation then the next thing is for us to show our reaction force so we are we are showing here that we want the reaction force at this point this point and this point we want it to show to us like you can see from the from his calculation here this is his reaction forces that he has calculated so he's going to show us the reaction force as well then the next thing is to show us our bending moment so we are calling the show bending moment method here and then we are the next thing is to show the shear force that's the the shear force diagram then finally we are going to show the axial force diagram also 
So let's run this. Let's run this and see our output, which is the name of the file dot py. So let's wait for it to run. And then we are going to compare it to the results that he has gotten also. So we are waiting for it to run. So uh, this was the initial model that it created because I asked it to show me using the the show the show methods here, the show structure method. So it showed me the then for the for the for the other diagrams. As you can see, this is the bending moment diagram. So comparing it to the one he calculated manually, you will see that it is almost similar. This is his bending moment diagram, which is at negative 10 kilonewton meter going to, so this is, this is also 10, 10 kilonewton meter and then it's almost the same when you check it. Then for the for the shear force diagram, when we check, so this is the shear force diagram, and this is his shear force diagram, which sometimes the the sign convention do changes but the value is almost is the same the value is the same and then this is for the axial force so this is for the axial force you can see all the values are the same it's just the same convention that is changing but it's almost the same so and I think the last thing so thank you very much for watching and I hope to do more on documentation of this Anastrop to show you how to read our documentation so that you can carry out structural analysis because it's a very good library. You can do a lot of structural analysis calculation with it. So thank you very much for watching.